Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is having a wonderful, blessed, happy, healthy uh, summer weekend. Uh, now that summer is kind of in its last leg, uh, kids, at least here in the Northeast, I know kids in Florida already started school. Uh, kids are starting school in the next few weeks. Summer's coming to an end. Earning season's coming to an end. And the question is going into this week is this new week coming up here, is the market rally coming into an end? Obviously, that is uh, a very, very open conversation. Uh, but the point is, and this is kind of one thing we kind of drive home uh, every single week, right? Or every single video that we do, we don't need to guess, right? We follow the price action. Um, our, our Bible, Quran, um, any, any, anything, anything you pray to God for, okay, uh, is technical analysis, right? That is our gift to ourselves and it puts ourselves in a position that we can look at the market with a very unbiased point of view and to put ourselves in a situation that we can make, you know, adult decisions, okay, based on uh, value and where the market is flowing. So let's talk about it, right? So market had uh, an incredible big run here. Uh, we're going to use the S&P 500 as a barometer uh, kind of in this point. So market had a big run. The key, again, if you've been watching this broadcast, you, you knew in nausea how big that 50-day moving average was because that, that broke the cycle, right? That broke that whole cycle of the downtrend. And for the next four weeks, we had a really, really big run, uh, which kind of, I don't want to use the word topped out. I don't want to use that word, but we kind of had a soft stop, right? A soft rejection um, right at the 4,300 level uh, of the SPX, which kind of translates into uh, roughly 432 on the spies, right? So any you know, anytime you attach um, kind of a movement into a big moving average, and again, there's nothing bigger than the 200-day moving average, you're going to find a little bit of resistance. And obviously this was a rejection that was you know pretty clean. And you know, we started moving lower, a little bit lower, lower, lower. Um, I, I think what the more important, if you guys watched Wednesday's video, because there is no, uh, unless my kids have a, some sort of game during the middle of the week, I usually don't do a Thursday video. But if you guys watched um, the Wednesday's video, it's literally the video right before this. Uh, you know, we, we talked about two levels here, uh, two levels, uh, both in um, the spies, which was going to be uh, 424.50. And we talked this area in the NASDAQ, uh, in, the NAS in the Qs. Uh, which was 3, 326. If you go back to the last video, you'll see pretty clean, uh, pretty clean areas uh, of interest. And Friday, you know, Friday we continued uh, to break down, right? We continued to break down from the rejection of the S&P 500. Um, and when you look at towards the end of the week, uh, you know, you really don't see a lot of things that are going to uh, put you in a situation that go, wow, this was crazy. Um, first, first week of losses for the major indexes in a month. Super bullish, again, you could tell that really, really big rally. If you look at the numbers for the week, it really wasn't that bad, right? You saw the S&P lose 1%. The Dow let, lost less than two tenths of a percent. That's just in ridiculously bullish. And the NASDAQ that put in the biggest, biggest range of them all uh, had a 2.5% decline, which, which is absolutely fine. And the question is going into next week, again, like I said, well, is the rally over, right? Is the rally over or is this just a normal uh, organic uh, you know, a little bit of a pullback that we trap shorts on the next rising channel and we start rallying back. The great part about trading is we don't need to guess, right? You don't need to guess here. Uh, all you have to do is the same thing that we do every single day is follow the technical views, right? Buyers clean up sellers, okay? Stocks go higher. Sellers clean up buyers, stocks go lower. And if you've been kind of watching this broadcast for years and years and years, or especially uh, been you know been trading via the PS60 theory. You know the most basic thing, uh, concept of PS60 theory that stocks trade from supply to supply and stocks trade from demand to demand. So for example, if you look at the spies, okay, they took out supply and the next went to the next supply. Took out this supply, went to this supply. Took out this supply, went to this supply, and yada yada yada. And it kind of works towards the downside as well, right? Hits supply, then goes to demand. Goes to demand 
goes to the man, goes to the man, Dan. And a great part about it is all these prices are right in front of you. So you don't have to guess what happens if the previous channel gets confirmed. All you have to do is kind of strike your strike your, your, your thesis, right? Strike your thesis and your approach and your research to kind of mirror of what you're seeing uh, with the price action. And this is kind of where we, you know, this is kind of where we go towards uh, next week. So let's use the cues, right? Let's talk about the cues because again, the majority of our work is done in the NASDAQ 100. Again, if you're joining this broadcast for the first time, I'm primarily techno high technology beta, right? We trade both long, we trade both shorts. Uh, again, everybody you know, wants and loves and feels great about a bull market, but again, you don't need a bull market. We want it, but we don't need it. All we need is value and all we need are stocks that are expanding toward one side of the market. Uh, or the other. So here's kind of where we are to start the week. Okay. Uh, so the NASDAQ lost, again, if you go back to Wednesday's video, we talked about the 326.30 level. And you can see it stopped here back to back days. So the NASDAQ, the QQQs lost the 26.30 area and traded again, just via the PS60 theory to the next demand zone where it stopped perfectly right on this 322 level. So going into next week, you don't have to guess, right? You don't have to have a whole discussion with somebody on social media, any one of your friends, anybody, right? You know that 322 is the bottom of last week's channel, okay? If the market holds 322, we're gonna start moving back up. If the market starts building, right? If the bears start building below Friday's channel of 322, well, again, here is your next area of rising support, roughly this 319 and a half 320 level. Again, nobody's talking about Armageddon, but again, this is the theory. Stocks go from demand to demand to demand. Same thing with the SPYs, right? So we talked about, you know, we talked about that uh, 424 and a half level. Again, we'll show you in the pivots in a second. Uh, and all it did was go to its next demand zone, which is right over here, this 421 level. So if the spies start building below 421 on Monday or Tuesday, whatever the case may be, okay, they'll go down to 419, which is the next uh, demand zone and so forth and so on. Obviously, again, if you're a bull or if you, if you are just a, 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 a practitioner of organic movements, you know a, a healthy market doesn't go straight up and you know a healthy market doesn't go straight down. That's why when we were underneath the 50 day moving average, yeah, the overall tone was down, but we had a lot of upward bias, right? It wasn't really that scary. And I even said in that seven month period, this is probably the most orderly bear market I think I've seen in a very, very long time because you saw so many opportunities to the upside. And once we finally got above the 50 day moving average, that's when we got really, really aggressive and ultimately tapped out uh, at the 200 day moving average on the queues. But that's what's cool about technical analysis. And, and, and I've always maintained this, you know, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing that you can have at your disposal that is going to be better than the chart, right? That's it. I, I don't care what news you're trading, what you know, newsletter you're subscribed to, giving you tips and alerts and all that crap uh, that's been fed down your throat by social media. The only thing that we have as all together, we have the same data, right? The same data that I'm watching, you have it as well, Mr. Jones, you know, you know, Mrs. Jones down the road, everybody who's an active participant in the market has exactly the same information. And if you put if you put your ego to the side, right? And you put your and you put your humble hat on and you realize that our opinions are gonna it's not the first time I'm saying this, our opinions don't matter, and the only thing that matters is price action off these levels you'll realize that unless it's a very aggressive news driven cycle which we were not in now right we were with the when when initially with the ukraine war and all that stuff we're not in a very aggressive spin cycle now and what you'll notice is every day that goes by you'll notice stocks are really obeying their levels pretty well okay i don't care if you're trading uh, Tesla, if you're trading, you know, the ETFs, whatever you're trading, they're honoring their levels pretty well, which gives you a lot of time at that level to see who has control. Obviously, if you're looking on the upside, you want to see, make sure your stock is building above the level. Obviously, if you're looking to the downside, you're making sure stocks are building below that level so you can get that measured potential to the next supply and demand zone. But that's what's cool about technical analysis. It, it, it's not a, it's not a subjective tool that you can have a great conversation with 26 people. It's, it's Stock is either going to obey that level or reject that level. That's very, it's, it, that's the most simplistic point of view, and I think a lot of new traders, again, like I said, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you know, you're looking everywhere, you know, up, down, sideways, and it's right in front of your face. So if you start falling in love with technical analysis, eventually you're not going to 
you're not going to care about being right. You're going to care about you know creating value and, and seeing the market in the right way to align. And, and eventually, emotions start to leave because again, if you're not biased on one side of the market, if you're not biased uh, to one side of a specific stock you trade, like for example, Tesla is my favorite stock. For me, I don't care which way it goes, up, down, as long as it goes, it goes. So as long as you subscribe to the idea that technical analysis really, really works, I'm not, and I'm not talking about for investors, you guys are a completely different conversation, okay? This is, we're talking about for the intraday active trader, right? Day-to-day, trade-by-trade. Investors are a completely different animal. If you believe in fundamental analysis, God bless. That is your, right? That's that's your, and you're, you're not talking about a day-to-day basis. You're talking about month-to-month, year-to-year. We're talking about day-to-day, interval-to-interval. So technical analysis, is it works. It's really, really good. And if you've been trading for at least 10, 12, 15 years, you kind of understand that it's seamless as waking up in the morning, washing your face, brushing your teeth, and getting dressed. And if you're a new trader, I get it. You're still trying to find yourself what works for you, what is you know what type of personality do you have what type of trader do you want to be but eventually the common denominator is all the facts and all the facts are staring at you right in the face so going into this week uh look i'm definitely watching the bottom channels because again majority of stocks closed at the bottom right so you're not going to be watching for breakouts if the majority of stocks close at the bottom but i i'm honoring these levels i know what happens so i know for example if the spies hold this 421 level, eventually they're gonna start bouncing back up. If they start losing the 421 level, they're gonna start moving down and that's when my uh, research kicks in. And if you look at a lot of charts going into Monday's session, you're gonna see a lot of stocks that broke support, right? Look at Amazon. Right, look at Amazon, right? It, bro- it broke this whole little channel here. Nobody's talking about Amazon's going to 100, but there's a trade here, right? You see this whole channel here that it broke? This is the lowest close in this whole channel. So if it starts breaking down this channel, is there another two, three dollars in this trade? Absolutely. It doesn't sound like a lot, but remember, it's 20 times, right? It's 20 times pre split. So a three point move in Amazon is like getting 60 points before it's split. That's a good move, and plus, it's so darn liquid. This is a you know this is a pretty decent potential if it starts confirm you know confirming Friday's channel. Look in Nvidia, right? And you're, gonna, you're gonna see a lot of names just like as well. Nvidia, they started coming for 170 and 160 short-term expiration. You see how it stopped right on support? It's the same thing as you know, the same thing as the as the indexes. Stocks trade from supply to supply and they trade from demand to demand. So if, if Nvidia starts losing Friday's channel. I mean, look how much room it has. There's a lot of room uh, in the video as well. And you can see a lot of charts like that. If you go through, you know, the NASDAQ 100, you're going to see a lot of names like that. Same thing would happen with Microsoft. Microsoft lost this whole channel here. So if it loses, starts losing the bottom of the channel here, there's another, what, five, six points in Microsoft as well. So you'll start, if you go through your research, and again, you could, you could zoom through the NASDAQ 100 within, what, three to five minutes to get a lot of really good ideas for the week. But the point is if the indexes start breaking down below Friday's levels, yeah, there's going to be another technical retrace. If they hold Friday's levels, those definitive levels that we just talked about, then yes, the market slowly but surely is gonna start to to rally. But keep this in mind, and this is the most important part, especially for new traders, a stock, and this this is a cheat code, a stock cannot go higher if it doesn't take out the previous day's high. The stock cannot go lower if it doesn't take out the previous day's low. If you start your, your your kind of journey with technical analysis, use that, right? Use that and then apply what other indicators or what other studies uh, you want to talk about. So let's talk about Friday session. Uh, again, market starting to pull in. Not a lot of things just because, uh, again, a lot of stocks are still above their channels. But again, there's enough, right? And, that, and that's the most important. Again, here's the macro cycle and SPIs. Uh, levels of importance 424 50 424 that's the five day moving average 423 also becomes a big level because that's the pre-market low held three times if it comes in right if it builds below it should flush uh, here is spies you know took out pretty much everything uh took out the 424 uh 424 level the 423 uh 423 pre-market lows and traded right perfectly into 10 day moving average of 421 again that 421 becomes uh the line in the sand for uh, for this week. Uh, NVAX for all you guys. I don't have a position in NVAX. I took a scalp on it the day before. Uh, NVAX earnings low. If it builds below, can flush. Here is the pivot below 38, right? Here is the pivot below 38 on NVAX. That is 
the earnings low. Once it took that out, it should it should continue to fade here uh, this week. It's a slow mover, but again, 38 to 36 so far. I think everything's said and done. Should get to you know 32, 33. For all you guys are holding it, just stay with it. The longer it stays below uh, 38, the better. Uh, Tesla stopped at the 10 day 888 twice. If it builds below, it can flush. I thought it could get to uh, 378. Uh, excuse me, 878. 378 is a Freudian slip. Uh, 878, the low of the day was uh, 877 and a half. The reason why 388.50 was, if you see this right here, you see this channel here? It held a low here twice. You see that? 88, you see that? 888 is the low? 888, 888. So it held the 888 twice, and then eventually uh, it gave it all up, went all the way down to uh, 877 and a half, you know, decent little scalp there, nothing crazy. Uh, Amazon started breaking down on Friday. Also, 140 if it builds below can flush. Here is uh, here's Amazon, right? Here is Amazon, right? So it took out the 40, this whole channel here that we just talked about, took out the 40, went all the way down to 38. Again, if this 38 starts to build, I think you can see 30, uh, 36, 35 next week. Uh, so keep an eye on that. What the hell happened here? Uh, keep an eye on that. Uh, Netflix only went down like a dollar and change and snapped back up a little bit. Uh, ADGI, nice little move. Again, some of these small caps have been doing pretty well. Uh, ADGI, 455, 460 needs to build uh, for a spike move. You know, what up about 20 cents? Again, not, not a big move, but uh, the small cap movers have been actually pretty decent uh, for the last few days. Uh, so it took out the 455, 60, went to almost 480 before a nasty little uh, reversal. Uh, oh yeah, here are the cues. The same, same thing with the spies. Same thing with the cues. Three twenty-six bulls fighting to keep control. That's the ten-day. Remember, that's the ten-day support. The same thing. These, these are macro levels. Uh, if it starts to give up, can see three twenty-four. Uh, they actually went down to three twenty-two. Um, no, that's it, and that's basically it. But uh, the, the one good thing again that we have to uh, understand going into Friday's action, there was a lot of speculation money. Obviously, uh, names like BBBY really took a lot of these, um, I guess, meme names and small cap, uh, I guess, lower floats to really higher levels. And like we talked about on Wednesday's level, you know, they might have it, they, it might have ended the run. I mean, just quickly as that, as soon as I forgot what the uh, activist name uh, name was, the fund was when he stole shares. But this kind of could have you know could have ended the run, and you, you see a lot of these. Uh, meme stocks really reverse uh, you know, pretty aggressively once uh, BBBY did. So again, the question is going into uh, going into uh, the new week is, well, is this just an orderly pullback or was that legitimately the top? And now we're going lower. And again, the answer to that is, guys, trust technical analysis. You don't need to guess. You don't need to wonder. You don't need to have a prolonged conversation. The top of the channel is a good thing. The bottom of the channel is a good thing. Whatever confirms first, that is the direction that it wants to go. Fall in love with technical analysis. And I can really, really pretty much guarantee that full, full technical analysis is going to fall in love with you. Guys, have an awesome, blessed weekend. I hope everybody has a wonderful, wonderful smile on their face, enjoying life, and God's help. I'll see you all on Monday. Take care.